And now for something really, really different. This is the brand new Mod X. I've just arrived here at the International Multi Hole Show at La Grande Mott. And this is really very, very different indeed. Yes, it's a sailing boat. And I shall try to explain to you what this French-based concept is all about. So the Mod X is a 70-foot catamaran with twin 125 square meter inflatable wing sails. So it's designed to be an autonomous vessel essentially um, to produce zero to zero CO2 and to give luxury performance and ease of handling. So to attract people from the motor yacht industry. Let's step aboard. So the first thing you'll notice when you get rid of rigs is you've got a lot, a lot, a lot of space. A phenomenal amount of space. Uh, and I'll take you up on the bow first of all to keep showing you some more of these, uh, of the wing sail parts, like a spacecraft, isn't it? So here we are up on the foredeck of the Mod X and there's a lot to take you through, a lot of facts and figures and why. So what they want to do, as I say, is to make a, uh, an energy efficient boat that runs off essentially solar and hydro. So you're using renewable power sources to regenerate the boat, uh, so to power the lithium ion battery pack. Uh, so basically when the boat's sailing, uh, it's hydro generating plenty of power into those banks and obviously when it's sunny there's solar panels everywhere. To make this efficient you need a performance shape so very thin actually very narrow wave piercing bows as a VPLP design and the yard is based in Lorient they know what they're doing as well because they built the mod 70s uh, with ocean developments built the mods, original mod 70s and they've teamed up with Aeroforce to design and develop these inflatable wing sails. Why? Uh, something new, something different, something more sustainable and trying to appeal not just to sailors, not just to um, you know, multi-hull enthusiasts, but those coming from a motor yacht market that want something that is automated essentially, something that's easy to sail, something that doesn't involve lots of flapping sheets and standing rigging. Uh, and this is what the result is here. You, a push button boat uh, that can do good performance and sail and be aboard in real luxury. Up on the deck here, you have 70 square meters of solar panels. Uh, and then you can see these pods that house uh, these inflatable wing sails each side. So at the bottom of that is a, a carbon tube. So these are telescopic tubes. So we can see from inside the boat as well. But if you just see the top of that mast, uh, you see what as well. You've got the wind indicators up here and up on the bow as well, because they're not going to be on top of the inflatable wind sail. Inside of that is, uh, it's like a P PVC, well, it's a TPU material. And as that goes up, as that inflates, um, you end up with a reefed section or a full standing height, 125 square meter of sail each side. And that is rotational. So that can turn 360 degrees, that let's call it a mass base. And there are six sections that go down telescopically inside that, and you can see them go through the boat here. So that's the mast base there, running through that carbon fiber, running through there into the technical room below here. So this is the heart of the boat, really. I've just been talking to Jean, who's the uh, CEO of Aeroforce. He's obviously developed the, the inflatable wing sails. It's, 100% electric boat. So those wing sails are meant to be 
totally automated from this section here. So Aeroforce worked with Madden Tech, who sailors will know are very, very clever autopilot AI developers, and it, they work a lot with the iMocker fleet, things like that. So what that means is from this single helm station, you, the boat is fully controlled by one person or essentially just the autopilot. So imagine you're leaving the dock here, you're out on the electric throttles there for the twin electric drives. Once you're out into the open ocean, you can lift one or two of the wings, wing up, wing up on port and starboard, and you can choose whether you're putting those into the reefed shape, which is about 65% of that 125 square meter sail area each side. Those go up, they automatically inflate as they go up. And then you can choose, this is essentially your sail version of your electric throttle. So here you're choosing whether you're, whether you want 25, 50, 75% or 100% of the sail area efficiency. What that means is you obviously have these rotating wing masts, those will rotate 360 degrees. So if you want those to be sailing with 100% efficiency, they'll go, they'll, those will set at the best trim to the wind. If you only want to go gently, you want to spill 50%, they will do that. They'll open out and spill 50%. So as I say, it's the, the mentality is like using the throttle on an electric engine, but you're just using it for the sails. It's really amazing. So. Uh, as I say, they work with Madden Tech to, to produce this control of this, control of the autopilot control of the motors, obviously, and your energy management system. So this is the brains of the boat. I was going to show you a bit of video, but that screen's flashing. Sorry, that's the camera rate of the video of the uh, of the television with my camera rate. Um, but I will try and show you some of that footage of their early sea trials. They just sailed the boat here. Uh, and one of the things that um, I took note of was that he was saying one person on watch went through eight jibes in two hours without disturbing anyone. Because bear in mind that these sails, once hoisted, can turn through 360 degrees. So if you're going downwind, you know, obviously they're set out at 90 degrees to the wind, but then you want to jibe rather than, the, you can just completely spill them and go through the jibe. So it should be this very, very little force on there and it's quiet. And it kind of just makes sense when you think about it. So as well as a net zero carbon impact, using sustainable materials through where they could, the, I guess the design project of the boat was to be able to do uh, 20 knots of boat speed in 25 knots of wind, essentially 150 degrees apparent. So the VPPs, which they are already sailing to, VPLP tell me, they can do nine and a half knots boat speed in 11 and a half. So the target was to do 10 knots boat speed in 10 knots wind, and they're pretty much achieving that already. And then in terms of power generation, so as well as all of this solar feeding into this power battery bank, you're basically being able to produce through hydro generation 15 kilowatts at 15 knot speed. 15 kilowatts at 50 knot speed. This is quite tricky to show you because down here in this door, I'm not allowed to take you in and it's the same on the other side. So at the foot of this is basically all of the brains of what they've developed. You've got a battery bank, it's 250 kilowatt hours of lithium ion batteries housed around this mast based room. But that means that you, even with no sun and no wind, not running the engine, uh, you're fine for eight to 10 days on board because you typically use 30 to 35 kilowatt hours on this boat. But then as soon as you sail, you're charging that reverse propeller. The <laughs> propellers rotate, so you're using the braking powers to recharge and then you're getting 15 kilowatt peaks. When you're doing 15 knot speed, you're getting 15 to 16 kilowatt hours of hydro generation repower into the batteries and the 15 kilowatt peak solar, so 10 to 12 
on a good day. So that's what's behind that door there. And then forward, you've got a guest cabin. This one is a, a charter version. I'm not gonna go too much into any lockers and stuff because uh, it's a very sort of customizable layout. This is number one. Um, in terms of accommodation, you know, you've got two cabins back there, but this is a charter version that could be one big owner's cabin. The big difference really in terms of layout is having such a big saloon area. Open plan style galley, and then it's the same format here. So you've got the technical room on port side as you come down bottom of the steps, and then a, a crew cabin, I guess, on the side sides. I mean, yes, it's a very automated boat, but I guess you'd have still a couple of crew looking after the boat. Yeah, so this is what would change into an owner's cabin, dropping down here from the saloon on the starboard side. But even as it is, you get this big twin or double. Huge hull windows, loads of headroom on here. It's big 70. As soon as you come aft, obviously forward, it's more narrow whether you're getting those wave piercing bows. Uh, but they share a shower and a, and a heads area with this double cabin here. So its format works quite well. Also like having a sink there as well for when you are sharing sharing head spaces. And obviously a lot of this is customizable. And to be honest, I'm not going to say, I'm not going into that side of it too much. Look at that, all that space behind the home cinema. Um, because to me, the interesting part is the technical side of it, of this boat. So again, this, just quickly down here, you've got the double. I'm just rushing through this a little bit because there's finally no one on board. Um, sharing with the, the sharing the heads and shower with the twin further forward there. But yeah, the for me, the impressive part is the technical element. So the development of this by Ocean Developments, um, who not only did the Mod 70s, but they, they did the hydrogen and kite, uh, automated kite system on race to water, combined with EPLP, combined with Aeroforce. It, it's really very, very impressive. Um, so yes, there's the aft deck area is a bit unusual because you know, there's no access out to side decks. It's all contained. So this is a really nice, big, safe area for guests to be on. Huge area for them to be on. Yes, they are looking at a flybridge area because they realize the appeal of this is gonna be a lot to people coming from the power side as well. Um, so yeah and sunroof type owners, I guess. But this will have obviously quite a lot of performance to it as well. It's only a 30 ton boat, so it kept weight down. A lot of carbon in, obviously for the masts, in the structure around that, and in the bulkheads. But there's a lot less compression, speaking to VPLP, a lot less compression, no standing rigging. So you're taking quite a lot of weight out and forces out from that alone. And as I say, the result is you get this huge 55 square meter saloon area and it gave them a lot to play with and does give them a lot to play with design wise. In terms of ramping up this or down, uh, as I said, they started at sort of 55 square meters and in terms of the efficiency of the wing sails, you could probably do that 55 foot yacht, um, but it would make more sense really to go up to a hundred foot yacht. Um, so yeah, they're looking at the different scales and sizes they could do, but down to about 100 square meter wings is about the smallest that it makes sense to do this sort of thing with. But you can imagine that will be a big appeal to um, bigger versions of this um, and maybe the commercial markets, well, the shipping market, obviously looking at this technology a lot at the moment. There is also, while I'm up here, a rain catching system. So the advantage of this huge flat roof, 70 meters squared of solar on here, is um, you know a big, big area to catch rainwater. So there's two 400 liter tanks that can be fed just from the rainwater. And wishbone rig on those wasps just going out next to us. Really fascinating new design. This the Mod X here. Um, sorry, I can't take you into the technical room, but hopefully I'll be able to show you some of the graphics um, and photos of that 
how the telescopic system works. And um, yeah, I mean, if you can imagine in terms of the inflatable wing sail itself, it's a, it's a TPU. It's a, I guess you could think of it like a cross stitch technology that paddle boards use, but without that high pressure. So, the, um, you know, paddle boards and wing sails typically go 10 to 20 um, bar of pressure. This only needs less than one. So there's pumps within inside this, let's call it a boom actually, within inside the boom here that will inflate that sail automatically whether at reefed height or at full height, um, 23 meters high from the deck level, if it's at full height. The first, yeah, the first videos I thought, oh, the masts aren't very high, but then I realized it was only reefed. Anyway, so when we're showing you those, it's probably because the, the reef, to bear in mind, they go up quite a lot further than that. Anyway. I'm rabbiting on because I think it's fascinating. Um, hopefully we'll do a sail trial on this someday and we'll do a feature certainly in Yachting World. Um, great to see new technology. Hope you enjoyed the tour. I'll try and include plenty of specs in at the end of this and um, yeah, some graphics as well. See you next time.